Life with the Holy Spirit. That many-membered body of Christ was foreshadowed in Israel under the Feast of Pentecost, even as the work of Christ was foreshadowed under the Feast of Passover. The Holy Spirit is the executive agent of the Godhead who came to earth to build the church that the Lord Jesus said he would build. Thank God it was his idea, not man's idea. We made enough of a mess of the church as it is. God wants to help us to do right in the church so that his presence and his anointing can be upon us. So Matthew 16 says, Simon Peter declared, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him in that 17th verse, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That 18th verse says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Oh, hallelujah. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19 says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And the Holy Spirit could not be given until Jesus Christ was glorified after his death, burial, resurrection and ascension. It is the indwelling work of the Spirit that seems to be the difference between the experiences of the Old Testament and the New Testament saints. It is the distinguishing feature of New Covenant times. This is seen at the baptismal sign which was given to John the Baptist concerning the Messiah. John 1 and 33 says, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Spirit. 
And this qualifies Jesus to be the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, you remember the Spirit de descended on special ones that God had used, equipping and filling them, but not remaining or indwelling them continually. And Jesus promised his disciples that the Spirit would come and dwell with them and in them and that as the Comforter, he would abide with them forever. Oh, thank God for Jesus that he is abiding in us. He's with us. Now then, let's look at five of the major features of the Spirit's work in the church. The Holy Spirit's work in the church, and it includes the following. Number one, always remember that the Holy Spirit formed the church on the day of Pentecost into a corporate structure the body of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. He baptized the living members into this spiritual body. Thank God it was his idea, not man's idea. Into his body. First Corinthians 12 says, for by one spirit, if it had been done by man, it would have been many spirits. But thank God it was done by him by one spirit. And we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. And then Ephesians 1 and 22 says, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. He is the head over all things. I don't care who acts like the head, who thinks he's the head. Thank God that he is the head over all things to the church. Number two, the Holy Spirit formed the church to be the new and living temple of God, setting believers into their places as living stones into the new covenant temple. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Ephesians 2 and 20 says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, we are built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Number three, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does what? Brings the anointing, brings illumination, brings direction to the church, as the new covenant priestly body. Thank God for his anointing, his illumination, his direction. We don't know uh, out of ourselves what the Spirit of God wants to do, but he leads us, he gives us illumination, he gives us his direction and his anointing. Second Corinthians 1 and 21 says, now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us 
in God. We've been anointed by him. The church of Jesus Christ has been anointed by him to be his agent in this season so that souls may be won, that the body of Christ may be fed, that people will be led by the Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And then Ephesians 1 and 17 says, that he may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Thank God for his wisdom. If you lack wisdom, ask of God and he will give you direction. How to lead his church, how to lead the people of God. We just don't think of stuff out of our own head to do. We've got to be led by the Spirit of God to be able to know how to move in God for this season. And then verse, the fourth thing, the Holy Spirit brings gifts and graces to the members of the church. The gifts of the Spirit are a demonstration in the church of the Spirit's omnipotence, the Spirit's omniscience, and the Spirit's omnipresence. Thank God the Spirit of God is everywhere present at the same time. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, our triune God. He's everywhere. Oh, thank God for Jesus. Uh, while he's moving in one church here, he's moving in another church over there. While he's moving in one work here, he's moving in another work over there. Everywhere present at the same time that lives will be edified and strengthened and souls saved. So it's done so that what? So that the evidence of the Spirit of God might bring forth the nature and the character of the Holy Spirit in the members of the body of Christ. And then Romans 12 and 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. And here's what it says. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Many people have ministries. What are we to do? Let us use it in our ministering. Ministry is just not for us. Ministry is about people about meeting the needs of people, spirit, soul, and body. God wants to use us to minister to people everywhere, every nation, every color, every creed. Souls are hungry for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives, let him do it with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Oh, hallelujah. And then number five, the Holy Spirit is the agent of direction and government in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is the head of the church in heaven and he directs his affairs in his body by means of the Holy Spirit. That's why we've got to be open to the Spirit of God and how he is leading and what he is saying and how he is moving. If we aren't open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, then what happens? Man gets in control. People get in control. They want their eyes 
their ideas to go forth. They think they can do it themselves. But you want to be led by the Spirit of God in your ministry, in your teaching, in your preaching, in your guidance and direction of people to be diligent, to be faithful to Almighty God. He directs the affairs of His church. I'm so glad it's His church. My God, hallelujah, I wouldn't want my name on no church. Ah, oh, my God, I want His name. I want Him to be glorified, Him to be exalted, Him to be glorified and worshiped. His affairs in His body by means of the Holy Spirit. It is, why? Why do we want that? Because it is the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who calls, He quickens, He energizes, He equips the various ministries in the church and every member of the body of Christ according to their particular place. What is Ephesians? Ephesians maps it out just as clear as day. And he gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for what reason? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry not so that people could be great and have a title but for the work of the ministry that the work would move forward that people would be concerned about preaching the gospel winning souls to Jesus Christ feeding the hungry clothing the naked taking care of seniors taking care of the community and the needs of the community getting the gospel out to where people are the equipping of the saints the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to what till we all come to the unity of the faith my God my God Help us, God. Help us, Lord, to come to a place of unity and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or a mature man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we be no longer children tossed to and fro by everything that comes along, by every deceitful thing, by everything that the enemy wants to throw in our face, to follow this and they're not following the Lord, to go do this and that's not of the Lord, but to do what the Word of God says in the body of Christ for the equipping of the saints, that the people of God would be edified. Oh my God, how many times you can go to places now and there's no edification, there's no exhortation, there's no infilling of the Spirit of God where you can feel His presence to want to worship Him and to glorify Him and to exalt Him. Why? Because too many men have sat on the presence of Almighty God. You can't even go in to worship the Lord. Everything has to come under their direction. There's no anointing. There's a, nobody's welcome. Very few people are welcoming the presence of the Holy Spirit into the body of believers so that they can be fed, so that they can grow, so that they can be strong in the things of the Lord, so that they can be taught the Word of God, so that they can hear what the Word is saying to them that they might become strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Oh my God! And that it's important to see that all the gifts, all the manifestations of the Holy Spirit are intended to be channels or instruments of divine love. 
if we do not use the gifts that God has given to the body of Christ and make them available to the love of God, we frustrate the purposes of God. We may have all the other gifts, but we are simply left like a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And we have nothing without divine love. Isn't that what the word tells us? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and don't have love, what kind of a love? Agape love. I become a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift, all of those gifts, the gift of prophecy, know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. My God, my God, faith works by love. The gifts of the Spirit ought to be able to be operated in the love of God. And at the end of that chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians, he says, I'll show you a more excellent way. And that most excellent way is unfolded in love. When the Holy Spirit comes, he comes into a heart that has been purified by faith and turned toward God. Oh, it might be some days where you mess up, you miss God's purpose, or misuse what God has made available to us. But in that case, it happens as Paul says, I've become a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And in effect, he said, I wasn't that way when I received, but through missing the purpose, I've become like that. And I frustrated the purpose of Almighty God. The goal of all Christian ministry is love. The purpose of God for the Christian is the consistent expression of divine love. That's how souls are one. Souls are one because men love souls and men love to see souls receive Jesus Christ. Look at these three phases in this process of importing God's love to us. The first phase is the new birth. When we are born again, we become capable of agape love. The second is the outpouring of the totality of God's love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You can't manufacture love. God's got to get into that heart of stone and give you a love for people, give you a love for ministry, give you a love for working to the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. That's what's given to us. Flesh isn't going to love people. The love of God in us is going to love the souls of men. The inexhaustible resources of God are made available to us when we yield ourselves to him. And third, the expression of that love is worked out on a daily basis, living through discipline and character training. And this is when the love that comes from God is made available to our fellow human beings through us. That is how it is with us. We receive God's love when we are born again. It's poured out over us by the Holy Spirit. But it only becomes available to our fellow human beings as it's channeled through our lives in discipline and in training. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is about. Training people that men might have character in their lives. How to win souls. How to work in love. How to work in unity in the body of Christ. Not fighting one another 
not discouraging one another, but we're all here to lift up Jesus Christ. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. You lift him today. Let Christ come into your life. Receive him. Let the love of God come into that cold, stony heart and watch your life be transformed by the power of Almighty God. God is for you today. Oh, and he wants the best for you. He said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Thank God for Jesus. Live for him today. Serve him because he loves you. He died and shed his blood for you that you might be able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ask or think of him according to the power of the Holy Spirit that's living and working in you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Until next time, we love you. You pray for me and I'll pray for you. But most of all, let's pray for this world that's in need of a Savior. God bless you. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Adopted by His blood, we've been redeemed. We've been made joint heirs with Jesus, and to reign as priests and kings. What do we say to these things, since God is for us? Who can be again?
and separate us from the love. 